All right, so let's get started with the um, plan we have. What we have done is to have um, two sessions every day and um, uh, we'll have a break between the session. So from now on, you know, we'll have a lunch break at 11.30 and from now until lunch, we also have five, 10 minutes break. And um, then Friday, we have only one session. Uh, in terms of go up uh, the topics that we have planned. So <clears throat> after the introduction, uh, we are going to um, show you a whole bunch of examples of AI in action. Um, then the afternoon session is going to be very exciting. It's about chat GPT, one of the most um, uh, exciting and the latest AI program that um, got to 1 million user in fastest ever. So much faster than Facebook or Twitter or any other software. And it went to 100 million, again, the fastest. And um, uh, practically, um, you know, now really it, it'll, it'll, it'll jump towards billion very soon. It's a very exciting program. In fact, what we're going to do is to um, understand how you can make a small app using that program without too much coding. Of course, if you know coding, it helps you, but even without that, you can uh, do some of the, some programming. And then we are going to uh, do an exercise for example, some of you or many of you will apply for college and you'll have to write, write a college essay. Well, um, how we could write a college, how it can help you write a college essay. Now we are of course going to talk about uh, what are the do's and don'ts, meaning uh, we don't advise you and we suggest you certainly not rely on any software to write your essay, but how you can uh, get some help. Uh, and competitive advantage in taking your own idea and guiding the software to help you write. So it should be not something that software gives you and that you put it in the, um, uh, you know, in your college essay, but it'd be something like you interact with it and make a very personalized uh, essay and then use it. Um, and, um, then we are going to, so there's a lot of things uh, to learn there. It will be, it'll be exciting, um, you know, uh, session. Tomorrow morning, we're going to um, do basic Python and basic machine learning in Python. Then um, we're going to talk about how AI is used in gaming. So let's say you have a game for uh, playing chess. chess or you have a game of solving Rubik's Cube. How do you use AI to solve such program? And we'll have, we'll have some demos. Um, we'll uh, also uh, show you a, a mental health chatbot. So one of the uh, type of programs that AI is used extensively is chatbot. The one that communicates with you, something that you're interacting with. So we have, uh, that plan for you, uh, and we'll show you the demo. Uh, we'll show you how patients could engage with it, how um, uh, doctors can engage with this. Um, in fact, uh, next Monday, uh, we have some doctors coming here, the mental health experts, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, whether we are ready to take this for uh, mental health in rural South Kenya. Then uh, Wednesday is very exciting. We are going to uh, start the day with a visit to a manufacturing uh, center. Uh, we have a center in smart manufacturing here, uh, you know, about five, 10 minutes walk. We're going to go there and you can see, uh, you know, some, you know, an assembly line for manufacturing, uh, a small one. And uh, we're going to show you how the data is collected. And then we are going to come back and show you how AI is used in manufacturing, right? So that would be, um, uh, you know, South Kenya has a lot of uh, manufacturing industry, right? So 
we want to show you, uh, you know, application of AI to manufacturing. And um, uh, see, our objective here is that uh, we're, going, we're going to expose you to AI use in many areas. Not all of you, even if you're interested in AI, not all of you are going to become um, uh, computer scientists or expert in AI alone. Uh, you may uh, actually work in different fields like manufacturing, like education, like um, healthcare. And there you may become an expert in applying AI there. So there are uh, AI jobs are not just in computer science and programming, but uh, many jobs are, uh, you know, when you apply AI to industry, for example, in this collaboration that we have with manufacturing, um, the students from manufacturing uh, and mechanical engineering, they learn AI. And then because they have combined their expertise of manufacturing with AI, uh, they, have, they have a lot of uh, exciting job prospects better jobs than if you knew only manufacturing or mechanical engineering. So that's something I wanted to, you know, really uh, get you thinking that there are many ways, avenues of applying AI and uh, you can take engineering and apply AI. You can take education and I apply, I apply. you can take social science and apply AI. Uh, and then um, in the afternoon session, we are going to talk about uh, use of AI to content, generate content. Uh, you, the chat GPT session will show you how you can use AI to generate content, but here we're going to talk about uh, creation of content and then use figuring out that this so this content is created by um, uh, human versus this is created by machine by AI. Right? How this is very important. Uh, recently, there was a you know very interesting case that came out. A a lawyer uh, used chat GPT to file his uh, case uh, and uh, it was, you know, and after he filed the case, um, uh, it, you know, people figured out that he did not write this. He used computer software to write this and that was a big problem for him now then. So, but the other big problem is fake news. Uh, there is massive amount of fake news, misinformation and disinformation going on. And um, many of all, particularly all of us are affected by this. If you're if you're consuming news, we are all affected by this. Very often, uh, the news that we are um, exposed to uh, uh, is fake news or misinformation. In fact, ten percent of Americans have, uh, uh, you know, uh, said that they themselves have willingly and knowingly, uh, uh, you know, propagated fake news, right? And this is now given that it is so easy to create fake news. Um, they have, uh, you know, there is just um, huge growth. Recently, I told a program to show, create uh, photographs of um, uh, Elon, Elon Musk and Kamala Harris getting married. And he showed me that product, you know, it, it made, um, uh, you know, gave, gave me a bunch of images in church and outside with all the flowers and, and it would be hard to tell unless you knew the fact that they never gotten married, you know, or, you know, perhaps not met. So that is another interesting thing you talk about. Then, um, you know, on the fourth day, we are going to talk about trust. Very important, trust, ethics, you know, the right and wrong use of AI is, is an important thing. We're going to discuss that, go down. Um, then we have a, a, another exciting uh, topic, AI in analogy. So uh, we are currently working um, with uh, your school district on um, using analogy to improve pedagogy or learning. Uh, so um, uh, suppose you take earth science course and many of you do, uh, you learn about carbon cycle or you learn about um, nitrogen cycle. And you have complex concepts to, you know, learn. So there is, uh, you know, and uh, some students would have problem or challenges. But if you can give analogy examples from other domain to help you understand, uh, you know, the concepts that you need to learn, maybe you can do better. So we're going to, um, uh, uh, we're going to um, uh, show you how that may be done. And we're also going to take your feedback. Now, I do uh, 
you know, want to say, first of all, I'll ask, uh, you know, your teacher whether we can collect the feedback. We have taken IRB approval. And um, uh, at any point of time, you don't want to be engaged in anything, you're most welcome to not. But it will be very valuable, helpful, if you can. Uh, so, and then um, on Friday, we have um, a lot of application that we can talk about how we, how we use AI in diabetics for uh, pediatric type 1 diabetic, so uh, uh, AI in autonomous vehicle, uh, health, food and nutrition, asthma, and so on and so forth. So there'll be a bunch of demos and other things. Um, I want you to um, feel free to ask um, the um, questions whenever you have and uh, you know engage. So let me start with uh, now a quick intro to a few issues in AI. Uh, how do I change here to myself? Yeah, and you know, when we have break at the end of the day during the lunch, just you know, uh, give your feedback, ask questions. Uh, you know, that will make it more fun. So uh, I'm going to talk about um, now. Every company is an AI company, and um, uh, this is what a um, chancellor of a college told me. We are trying to mobilize our campus activities around AI. So uh, this AI institute is a university-wide institute. And um, just to get you thinking that AI is everywhere now, and that every company um, is investing in AI big time, and not just in the US, but worldwide, right? So uh, what that means is that uh, given the extensive use of AI worldwide, when you go in the job market, you are going to compete with the people, with other people who have AI skill. The other very important thing is that among the um, job that are coming to the market, very large percentage of jobs are, um, uh, you know, really uh, uh, involving AI. So. It's a, an area from even career perspective, uh, very, very attractive at this stage. So one of the reasons why AI is um, uh, really uh, becoming uh, uh, you know, important now is that we are creating massive amount of data. And um, here you see some figures here, uh, the number of tweets every day or, um, uh, you know, uh, the data uh, collected by connected car, terabytes, and number of messages being sent, right? So our ability to create content, not just the humans, but the machines out there. So there, there are 20 billion sensors deployed that are relaying data to the internet every second. With so much data, you don't have time, you know, human can't keep track of what's being created, right? All the data coming in. So we need pro automated ways to analyze the data to find something interesting, right? In that context, um, AI has really emerged as a way to continuously analyze data and give us alerts, tell us when there is something worth paying attention to. Most of the time, there is nothing to pay attention to when you're collecting data using a sensor. But sometimes there is, right? So, um, or that when you collected all this data, you want to uh, uh, find the trends. You want to use it for prediction. So, use it, growth of data is the one that is a key, key driver um, that um, uh, is really uh, pushing for AI. Uh, very interesting um, uh, you know, quote here, information is cheap, data is, you know, but understanding is expensive. Well, it should have been expensive, not expensive. Uh, I don't know how that came there. Uh, so 
AI is about converting data into knowledge, insights, and actions. Here is a, a big time, um, uh, uh, you know, CEO of Bain uh, Capital. Uh, this was already in 2020, I believe, 2019, at World Economic Forum. He said, every company is now an AI company. The industrial companies are changing the supply chain. Every sector is not only tech, it's AI. CEO of uh, uh, IBM, uh, this is a bit old. So it'll be, instead of will be, is being converted into is. There are a lot of societal drivers, meaning why you want to use AI and where you want to use AI. And there are a lot of technical areas where um, uh, you know, AI is very important. Another very interesting thing that has happened is that you see every five years, the most important companies um, get changed, right? You know, you know, you'll see that no company in the previous uh, or seldom, this, this was there, but otherwise seldom a company remains leader in five years. Right now, all companies that are leaders are AI companies. Just, um, uh, you know, uh, earlier this year, um, a company that manufactures, NVIDIA, that manufactures AI chips, become a trillion dollar company and is among the top five now, right? And Facebook has dropped off, for example. But, um, uh, you know, um, currently at least, um, uh, the technology companies that uh, have invested in AI are the top. In the future, the technology companies that have used AI may replace some of these. So um, uh, AI skills are global. You can see top uh, countries, United States, China, and India, and you know they are all kind of uh, going to compete to be top. And this shows AI being applied in different industries. So you can see all kinds of industry where AI is being applied, right? So even if you say, okay, I want to become a chemical engineer, you'll find the use of AI. You say, I want to become physics, you'll find the use of AI and all those things. Materials, very important, AI. So US has been investing in AI. Um, uh, this is the uh, you know, first university-wide AI institute in the US Southeast. And um, we do a lot of translation research, meaning uh, research that apply. So um, these are just some of the top areas that we work on in right now. I, I won't read all of them, but you can see kind of broad coverage. So today we are going to, uh, this week we are going to talk about some of them and uh, um, how, how much we talk about will depend. Um, these are some of the technical areas within AI that we work in. So I talked to you about a chatbot or conversational AI. Certainly we do a lot of machine learning, deep learning. We do some, you know, a lot of natural language processing and understanding, computer vision, image processing and such, uh, and, and, and some other things. So uh, these are, you know, in the center are some of the technical areas, outside we are some of the application areas that we work in. So um, I think I'll pass then. Now, some of these things uh, in, um, you know, pl planning and uh, material planning. Um, so we had a project, for example, with a BMW. Uh, and BMW is pretty big in uh, South Kenya. They have plant in Greenville. And uh, we helped, uh, you know, use AI for their supply chain problems. Okay. So, um, you know, during COVID, uh, parts were getting quite delayed at the border. Then what do you do? This is where AI was applied. Uh, this feature factor is, is something you're going to see in detail on Wednesday. Uh, autonomous vehicle, you're going to also see later on. So I won't discuss here because it will be repetitive. Um, and then in healthcare, we do a whole lot of work. So, um, you know, for example, um, a, um, 
child, 10 year old has asthma and asthma triggers can be pollen, could be um, poor air quality, could be uh, exposure to secondary smoke in house. Uh, many, many reasons, uh, you know, that can trigger somebody's asthma. How do you identify triggers? How do you uh, identify symptoms? How do you remind the child to take control of medication? And how do you, uh, you know, advise the child to keep rescue medication and take it in a timely manner to avoid hospital visit, right? So these are the kind of things that, um, you know, we, uh, we have worked on in the case of asthma. Um, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. We collect a bunch of data is using sensors and talking to the patient and uh, we monitor that 24 seven. Then we have nutrition. We're going to talk about that on Friday. Um, uh, so how do you choose, um, um, uh, how do you choose the right food to eat if you have a choice to make? Um, drug in, in pharma, there are many applications like discovering new drugs, uh, selection of patients for clinical trials and things of that nature. Um, here is an interesting thing. Uh, during COVID-19, um, uh, we saw significant increase in the mental health issues, uh, addiction issues, uh, domestic violence issues. And um, what we did was to uh, gather uh, um, a very large number of tweets. Uh, it says here we gathered 8 billion tweets. Uh, and uh, we analyzed them. And we analyze them to understand how different states are doing in the nation. We call something, some, we develop something called social quality of index. And so some states are doing good, some states are doing bad, and how they keeps on changing week by week. So we can monitor the whole thing. And then uh, we go deeper into that and understand why. So you can see uh, at a, it's in the states. Certain states, the frequency of tweets led to depression, addiction, anxiety, and they keep on changing over a period of time. And then we associate them with the government policy. So, for example, government comes up with the policy for wearing the mask. Government comes up with the uh, with cl school closures. When the schools closed, um, uh, I think the school children were affected. They la lost social interconnections. Uh, some of them went towards addiction. Uh, uh, when the uh, businesses were closed, people were out of job. Uh, you know, you know, parents were affected, and uh, they, you know, what what happened when they are affected? Uh, the stress shows up, right? So those are the things that we can uh, understand here. When the schools closed, parent had again problems because uh, now. Um, uh, uh, you know, they, they need to do childcare, especially if they are younger children. So you can uh, also understand, uh, you know, Gen Z, millennial, how they are affected differently to these kind of changes in the world. We um, did extensive work in disaster coordination uh, to connect first responders to those who need. So. Uh, there were major floods in a uh, state called Kashmir in India in 2012. We had developed a so software that will monitor anybody requesting for help online uh, by Twitter. And we, and we had a bunch of volunteers who verify that. And then we will send to Army Rescue Office who will arrange for the uh, you know, standard person to be picked up. So these are the kind of things that you can do. Yeah, that's true. But you know, uh, the, in in cases where um, you, you, immediately after um, disaster, when the water is already very high, um, uh, you're not able to reach all of them. So people are asking for help, right? Uh, you can do with phone, but uh, that you know you can't keep up as much. So uh, here, uh, people started. You know, since social media, people started using social media for asking help, right? 
and so being able to uh, analyze and there's so so many tweets or so many Facebook posts going on. So to analyze uh, those um, posts and uh, say, oh, somebody is asking for help. Where is that person? What level of help it is? Is it medicine emergency, medical emergency? Is it some other emergency? Right. So there was a tweet saying we are stranded on third floor of a hotel building, and uh, my child is without medication. So you know you you can now you need to analyze, you need to prioritize, and then you send um, uh, you know the uh, rescue. So there are many challenging issues with that. Um, AI in education, uh, there is extensive work going on there. So uh, there is a fantastic video of um, um, uh, you know. Uh, from Khan Academy, which is a very powerful, very um, exciting uh, company that supports education. Uh, and they developed a very uh, good chatbot that can personalize in, you know, helping you learn. Uh, maybe uh, it depends on, say, say, eighth grade math or, uh, you know, 10th grade uh, physics. And they, they, they've done a fantastic job and they extensively use AI, including the latest program called GPT-4. So, uh, I was engaged with this company to develop something called knowledge graph, meaning when you uh, when you take a domain, let's say chemistry, there's all this knowledge about molecules and you know substances. Well, we put that in a uh, computerized representation called knowledge graph, so that the uh, just like humans have knowledge and they can understand data more easily, we can make computers understand data more easily because we have that knowledge in our programs. So anyway, um, and then there are um, a lot of other things. For example, um, uh, there are seemingly th in the things that humans can do very well that AI can still not do very well, uh, but this is changing very fast. So there is a, a guy uh, called Jeffrey Hinton called father of modern AI. Uh, he he uh, is credited with something, you know, inventing the deep learning, a particular, you know, method of deep learning. And uh, he recently quit his uh, job with Google so that he can freely talk about it. And he's really worried about AI. So that's why we have a session here on trust, AI trust. So um, I think I will uh, leave it that. And, um, pass, you know, at this point, do you have any questions? Do you guys want to ask anything, any comment? Okay, so you set up your laptop. Uh, if somebody wants to, you know, take a break, go out, go out, and you just start.